Horse Race Media Availability for this afternoon's FedEx 400 bene Benefiting Autism Speaks. And we've now been joined by our race winner, driver of the number 48 Lowe's Pro Services Chevrolet, and uh, Jimmy, an incredible accomplishment this afternoon, your 10th victory here at Dover. You become one of five drivers who's been able to accomplish that at a particular track. Joining the ranks of Richard Petty, Daryl Waltrip, Dale Earnhardt, and David Pearson. And you're also want just one lap shy of leading 3,000 laps here at Dover. So um, an incredible day for the 48 team. Um, just talk a little bit about the race and being able to come home with your 10th victory. Yeah, just a tough race today. Um, we went from 14th to 5th in, in pretty quick order. And then just the top five cars were so equal that uh, it was just – you couldn't pass. You know, you really just could not get by somebody. If they made a bobble or mistake, you could close up. But then the next set of corners, <coughs> excuse me, the next set of corners, they would, uh, you know, get back to the bottom and run a line and kind of hold you up, and you couldn't go anywhere. So, I really felt like it was going to be a game of inches today. And as the race progressed, my team did a great job on pit road and got me a couple spots. And then I'd lose them on a restart, being pinned down on the inside, and I, I just. I felt bad for my guys that I couldn't do anything with their awesome pit stops. But when it came to green flag stops, they once again nailed the stops and we were able to leapfrog some guys on the racetrack. And then that really set up our uh, our race at the end. And I was able to finally get to the four with 25 to go, get, get kind of close to them. That first caution came out. And then really I, I'm just telling myself inside the car that you're locked in. This is an all or nothing situation. You need clean air. Do anything you can on the restart to get the lead, um, be as aggressive as possible. And I was able to get the lead and get control. And then with control of the restarts and having lane selection, that was also a huge advantage for those last two restarts that we had. So um, it all came together for us very late in uh, in the race. But once we had our opportunity, we took advantage of it and, uh, and got our 10th win here. And we've now also been joined by our race winning crew chief, Chad Knaus. Okay. And um, Chad... Ten wins here at Dover for the 48 team, a tremendous accomplishment. Talk a little bit about, you know, the call of the race today, but also what it means to the team to be able to win um, the 10th victory this afternoon. It was, uh, gosh, it was so great to be able to come here this weekend and uh, compete for that. I didn't realize that we were going for 10 wins until we showed up here. I don't remember anybody even saying anything about it last year in the fall, so it was, it was kind of a shock to me. I didn't, didn't really touch on that. So... To be able to go out there today with the, the Lowe's Pro Services Chevrolet and, and run the way that we did um, was, was really great. We didn't qualify quite as well as what we wanted to, but uh, Jimmy made quick work uh, to get up to the top five, and it seemed like, gosh, it just seemed like we were going to run the top five and fifth all, all race long for about 75% of the event. We just couldn't seem to, to get anywhere. He'd put together, much like he said, a couple of really fast laps and gain on somebody, and then you would lose the air, and we would gain a couple on pit road, and we'd lose them on a a restart and it just it, we just couldn't get it It was just tip or tat all day and then finally we started to put it together and get a couple here and a couple there and uh, once once Jimmy got into a position where he could battle with uh, the guys for the lead he, he did a very very good job and made quick work of those guys I would, could have been prouder he uh, he did a fantastic job on the restarts and got out there managed what he needed to got the gaps where he needed to and uh, it was it was pretty awesome Right. We'll go ahead and take questions for Jimmy or Chad. If you have one, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Holly, then go to Kelly, and then Jeff. Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. So I'm guessing you weren't necessarily toying with the field all day, even though people kind of would look at it because you moved forward, you were always there, and it was, you know, Jimmy's there. We can't consider this done yet. Was it really towards the very end that you felt you were going to, to, to challenge for the win, or did you kind of feel like the car was good all day, you just needed certain things to happen? Yeah, I really felt like we had, I'm dive bomb by a fly here. I really felt like we had the speed in the car, and I made my way to fifth, but the, the top five cars were so equally paced that um, I, I just I couldn't go anywhere. So it might have looked like I was just kind of setting up something for the afternoon, but, but uh, that was certainly not the case. I wish that we had clean air earlier and could have uh, controlled the race and, and made some adjustments for the car up in the lead. But uh, we, we couldn't go anywhere. And then the 78 led a lot, and I could see he was pretty close by. Uh, I think the 4 probably had the biggest gap. Um, his car had a lot of speed until that last run. It looked like they struggled a little bit on that last run. But 
Um, we just we, we couldn't get there. Unfortunately, uh, there was enough time left at the end. I mean, when we finally had our shot, there was inside 20 to go, I guess, uh, to, to win the race. All right. Kelly, we can get a microphone. Thank you. Kelly Crandall with PopularSpeed.com. Jimmy, it kind of piggy, piggybacks off of Holly's questions, but in the previous nine Dover wins, you led at least 170 laps. Today, you led 23. Did this one feel the, the toughest as all, uh, toughest of all of them? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, it was so difficult to, uh, to, to pass in the top five. Um, I was encouraged because we were all very close, and I could see the leader in most scenarios. And the second, third, fourth was was right there. So it was inspiring to uh, you know stay on your game in the car and stay disciplined. And I was just hopeful I could put pressure on the car in front of me and have them make a mistake to where I could I could get by. But and everybody, it was just, it's shocking to say, but those guys are all pretty good. <laughs> Nobody made mistakes, any big ones for that matter. And uh, it really took creative strategy on pit road and fast pit stops. To, to get the passing done inside the top five. Uh, that, that's really what set us up for the win. All right, Jeff, go ahead. Jeff Clark from USA Today. Uh, on Friday, Jeff Gordon came in here and he said of, of the three previous wins that you had, that we all scratch our heads and are amazed that he's been able to do that because we don't feel like we have really performed any of us to that level, but they have done an excellent job with execution. Um, would you, is that a fair statement to say that um, you're, you're, you've been able to win races this year by uh, through a lot of execution and not necessarily dominance at times. Um, man, I feel like I feel like we've had good cars in, in race circumstances. You know, qualifying and raw speed hasn't been our strong suit, and that's that set us up for some long Sundays, as we all know. Um, Gosh, one race I didn't even get a chance to qualify, and we came back and won at Atlanta. So, <clears throat> you know, the, the raw speed department, I feel like we are lacking a little bit, and we're aggressively going after that. I mean, my guys are, are working so hard, and that might be some of the, uh, you know, anxiety you sense or feel or hear on the radio when we're, we're just we're trying so hard to create speed with our cars that, uh, you know, it, Friday it might show a little bit there in what Jeff was speaking about. But come Sunday, I feel like we've been racing really well. Um, I think our cars have been much more friendly to drive than what I had last year. I haven't been as much on a knife edge um, racing through traffic and in different scenarios. So uh, and I feel like we've been racing good. Just uh, used a little bit of raw speed on, on a Friday. All right, we're going to go to Bob and then back up front. Bob Pockers, ESPN. Um, kind of... Uh, since this win was you, you led twenty something laps compared to one hundred seventy, would you have left today if you were finished second or third and been like that was a decent day? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that any of the top five cars had a chance to win today. Um, it seemed like that last run or two we got strung out a little bit more than we had all day long, but. Uh, you know, up until that point, up until maybe that last set of tires we were on, I, I kind of went through my mind. I'm like, man, I'm doing all that I can. 78's been leading. He's right there. You know, the, the 4, the 20, the 18, then me. And then the 42 ran behind us all day long. I'm like, maybe it's just meant to be this way. <laughs> like, we can't. We're just all that equal. Um, and then at the end, it seemed like that last run, things kind of stretched out a little bit more for us. But, uh, you know, it... it it was a hard-fought day. I mean, I mean, run second today. Those guys, their tongues hanging out just as much as mine is. You know, second to fifth really drove the wheels off their cars today. All right, we're going to come back up front, please. Dustin Holt, Times Record. Uh, Jimmy and Chad, congratulations on your victory today. Um, when you came to Dover your first time in 2002, how has your impression of the track changed, or is it still the same, even though you've now won 10 races here? It hasn't. My love for it has just grown deeper. Is about all I can say. I came here in an ASA car in '98 or '99 and fell in love then. And uh, even though I didn't have the greatest success in the nationwide car or Xfinity car here, um, I, I still loved the track. And then we won both races here in our rookie season. And um, you know, it 
it was cool to have this tra the track that I enjoyed so much uh, turn into a track that I could win at, and then we've been able to keep that feeling going for a lot of years. All right. I believe we had a question in the middle row there. Do we have a question? Okay. Joseph Walken, FrontStretch.com. With becoming the fifth driver to win 10 races at a single track, are you, and also coming near Dale Earnhardt's mark, what does this mean for your legacy before you turn 40? I, man, I really don't think about those things. Um, very thankful for the opportunity that I've had at Hendrick Motorsports. The amazing people I've had to work with, uh, the support from our sponsor Lowe's, Chad, Rick, you know, I, all of those things and the, and the fact that I sit in that 48 car has allowed me to uh, win the 10 races here and have this great opportunity at, at history with uh, Dale's win total. Um, but it's not something that I said, yeah, I'm going to go do that. It's not a goal that I put out in front of myself. Um, it's right there in front of me, so I look at it and think, wow, this is incredible. I mean, what, what an opportunity. So, yes, it's a, a priority for me and something I want to do, but I'm, I'm almost in shock that we're there. I mean, 74 race wins, 10 here. I mean, you, you can't dream that big. So I'm just uh, blown away and honored by the, uh, the success, you know, the the, what we've done with our opportunity and honored to have a shot at history um, with Dale and then the 10 wins here. Right, go uh, ahead. Zach at Tanzaretti, front stretch. Uh, once again, you and Kevin Harvick finished 1-2. Uh, uh, you guys ended the sport at almost the same about time. Have you ever thought that all these years later you guys would be battling nose-to-nose -nose practically every week? No, I really didn't. I most know the story that we both um, spent time at Ron Hornaday's house and trying to find our way in the NASCAR world and the Charlotte area in general. So uh, to you know, be two guys that were sleeping on couches at Hornaday's house to, to lead in laps and, and fighting so hard for race wins and potentially a championship in 2015 is uh, nothing that was on our, our radar then. All right, we're going to go to Mike. Mike Hembry, USA Today. Uh, Jimmy, your your tires were pretty old coming to the end of 400, and then you had the extra laps tacked on. You didn't appear to be under, under a lot of stress, but uh, was there any concern about the tires the last uh, four or five laps? Yeah, th there was, especially the first restart. Um, I didn't know if Chad was just being a car salesman or what, but he told me the guys on two hadn't been very successful, and I, I wanted to believe him, so I, I believed him on that one. And we fired off well and maintained the lead. Well, I, I mean, I know you're going to say what you got to say. <laughs> uh, we got going, and the guys on four didn't come through, and the guys on two didn't go anywhere. I thought, well, damn, he wasn't lying to me. We're going to be in good shape. <laughs> so it was really about getting down the front stretch on the restart, getting up through the gears well. Um, and that last restart, Harvick hammered me in the back of the car and shot me out in front of the five. And uh, once I had the, the racetrack to myself, we were in control then. All right, do we have any final questions for Chad? All right, we'll take our final question for Chad. Tom Bowles, Front Stretch and Athlon. Chad, this year you guys have had a little bit of a yo-yo. You guys will have wins like at Dover, and then you guys had a difficult week at Charlotte, you know, a difficult week at Martinsville. With the new chase, does that concern you at all, or not really because you guys are bouncing back you know, and winning the following week? Well, I think that you're spending too much time looking at the result and not the performance. Uh, first and foremost, I think at Martinsville, if we hadn't had a uh, power steering cooler problem, we would have probably finished in the top five easily. Um, <clears throat> last week in Charlotte, we were qualified poorly, and, and Jimmy did a great job of managing it and driving to the front. We worked on the car really hard. Unfortunately, he spun out, um, which gave us the opportunity to work on the car, but um, you know, we were trekking in and waiting for the evening hours to come. So I think that uh, as we're finding our stride with the rule package this year, I'm actually fairly pleased uh, with uh, the way that we've been performing. I think that we've got to do a better job on Friday. I feel as though that the race starts on Friday, and we've we've really done pretty pitiful on Fridays, and uh, got to do significantly better there. We're working really hard on it, really hard. And uh, if we can do that, it'll set us up to, <clears throat> excuse me, get in position to get a solid pit pick and really let our pit crew start to shine. So. Um, you know, although we've had a couple of bad finishes, I think the major problem there is is starting on Friday. And I think when we've had the bad finishes, we've actually performed fairly well, um, solid top ten. All right, Chad. Congratulations on your victory today. We'll let you go ahead and 
run out. Any final questions for Jimmy? All right, we're going to take our final question from the press box. Go ahead. Jimmy, uh, Scott Walsh from the uh, Scranton Times. Uh, two, two questions. One, could you maybe talk a little bit about the driver's meeting? And uh, two, um, next week, how do you right, take this momentum into uh, Pocono, another place you've had? You haven't won 10, win, 10 times there, but you've had some success there. Yeah, the driver's meeting. Which, what, what about the driver's meeting? The uh, driver's meeting that was last night. I missed that memo. I wasn't there. Um, I was on a bicycle ride. I rode 52 miles yesterday, so hopefully I'm not going to get in trouble for missing a meeting that was taking place. Um, it must have been, uh, gosh, now it's, it's kind of, I don't think I was invited to that meeting. I haven't won enough races or championships. That was for something else. Um, the, uh, Pocono, I'm, I'm excited. It's such a different animal at that racetrack in, in what creates speed. Uh, last year we had strong performances, a uh, year before strong performances, so um, looking forward to to going up there. Um, you know, the, it's always a fun area. Um, great roads to ride on. Do a lot of cycling when I'm there. Uh, so just excited to get up there. And, and what's neat about the position we're in with these wins, um, fuel strategy is such a player in how the outcome of that race uh, works out. And we can go up there and not care. So so that gives us an advantage. And you know, the guys with wins right now can can take advantage of that. Uh, situation in the race on Sunday. All right, Jimmy, we appreciate your time this afternoon. Congratulations on such a historic victory, and we wish you the best of luck in Pocono. Thank you.